ABC 3340 News starts now with breaking news. Good morning, everyone. I'm Sarah Snyder. We begin this midday with breaking news coverage of President Donald Trump's visit to Lee County to tour the tornado damage. His flight took off this morning about 9 o'clock from Joint Base Andrews, and it landed just about 15 minutes ago there in Fort Benning, Georgia. Right now, you are taking a live look at Fort Benning. This is Marine One, and the president just moments ago, he came off of Air Force One. He shook some hands with people there greeting him, and now he and several others are taking off for an aerial tour of Lee County. Pam, tell us what you're seeing. What, what is the situation where you are? What you were seeing is what we are seeing literally where we are standing. Uh, that was Marine One that you were seeing and we were watching from the ground here. And again, we don't know how long this aerial tour is going to last, but the president's time here is limited. He expects to be wings up by 1.35 Central Time this afternoon. So, you know, he, he's going to be here. He's going to the church, as you heard earlier, to meet with the, the members of the families who lost someone. And then he is back to Fort Benning and on then to Florida for the weekend. What we do know is that it is extremely important that the president is here today in Lee County. And you say, well, why, Pam? Because we've already gotten FEMA in there. He's already signed the disaster. But what this means when the president believes that it's important enough to come is that it brings so much more notoriety, so much more publicity, if you will, to what is happening in this community, a community that so desperately needs help right now. If you are hearing it in the distance, they are literally going to fly directly over the property on which we stand. It is coming right now, and Bill Castle, I'm trusting, is showing this to you if you are taking it. This is Marine One right above us as we speak. Looking below, and I will tell you about the case here on this property in just a moment. One directly overhead and flying still on an aerial tour of this area. What he is seeing is the total devastation left behind by this EF-4. Let me tell you, Sarah, just a little bit of the story on the land on which we stand. Just Sunday, early Sunday afternoon, a family lived in a house, a constructed house right here. There is nothing left of that. In fact, all the way over behind me, is what is left of that house. Two people, though, were alive and pulled from the rubble. Now, just up on another portion of this property was a single wide mobile home. That single wide is now wrapped 15 feet up into a tree. A young man in that house, alone, did not hear the siren did not hear the siren. And he told me earlier, he said, you know, when they test it on Wednesdays, I always hear it. I did not hear it Sunday, perhaps because the storm was too strong. This young man, though, was able to pull himself out of the rubble of his mobile home, run over the embankment with a broken leg and a cracked rib to help find his father and his stepmother. Help arrived very, very quickly, he said. There were people on the road and they came down and helped to pull those people out. But as you look around me, you can tell there's nothing here. And yet, yet, this morning we were here on the, on the premises talking to these people. There are a lot of people here digging through the rubble right now, just trying to rescue something that matters to these people. They found a statue uh, an award that this young man received in 1995 for playing baseball, completely intact. He smiled. He got something back for his life. And um, I think that, you know, every time I cover these stories, and unfortunately there have been way too many of them, it's real easy to let your emotions take over. And you realize, as you look around, there by the grace of God go I. There is nothing left here. And yet these people continue to say, 
we're a close-knit community we're going to be fine the help is so much appreciated and as we just saw with with marine one overhead the president our senator congressman governor on board with him they are talking about making this place whole again and i think sarah that is what everybody wants to see every time this happens you and i know it happens way too often in our state but they're here to help and the people say thank you oh the, and st the stories are just incredible pam and um and, and being there and seeing them and witnessing that disaster firsthand there's the pictures don't even do it justice we know that the video that uh, we, we bring it only shows so much and and that's that's part of why the president you know wanted to come and see it that's why governor k iv is is down there today uh hearing these stories and um hopefully it will touch them as as much as it touches anyone else who comes down the volunteers and and the reporters and the photographers who are there it's it's heartbreaking to see and um like you said our state has seen this too many times you know we think about april 2011 and the mass destruction that we saw with that but every time we cover these stories we see the human spirit and we see volunteers coming out and we see the best of Alabamians coming together, um, working together and and bringing those communities back and making them whole again. And we certainly hope that that will be the case here. You see him right here. This is again that live picture. He is greeting Governor Kay Ivey. Again, this is at the Auburn Airport. It also looks like that is Senator Doug Jones greeting him um, in that area as well. Several people there to greet the First Lady and the President and First Son Baron as they all get off of Marine One, having just taken an aerial tour. Now, this church has a special meaning already in this community, Sarah. This is Providence Baptist Church, and it is where those 23 families got the final news uh, that their family members had not survived that tornado. And today it'll be their place where they are able to meet the president, the consoler in chief in this role here as he makes his way here to this church and to tour the damage. And I want to show you just here if we can, it may be difficult to see. There have been some crosses that have been erected with the names of all 23 that had died in this tornado. And you see members of the family that have been brought over to that area where they will meet the president now taking a look at those crosses, taking a look at the names and the honoring that is being done from all over the country for this small town here in Beauregard in Lee County. This area is, is, is cut off. That is a private uh, meeting that will take place between the president, the first lady, as well as that delegation and those family members of the 23 victims who are getting that opportunity to speak to him. We don't know what they will say. We believe that the president will be touring the damage areas first and then making his way here to talk to the family, something that we expect to happen here over the course of the next hour or two. And then anticipation is not just among us. There have been people who've been gathering here all along this area, getting ready uh, to, to meet the president. I'm joined by Sarah and her family. They've been out here, been out here for a, a better part of an hour now waiting, uh, I understand, obviously, to see the president. Yes, we, um, the boys, I have three boys, six, five, and three, and they, we really got up this morning really wanting to see the president, so we hopped in the car and came over to Providence. What has the last week been by, been like? And I understand this is a tornado that hit close to home for your family. Yes, um, it's been very busy. Um, we were not hit directly, um, but we have neighbors who lost between five and ten family members. And so it's been a very sad week. but. Um, it's very encouraging to see how the community has reached out. And what, what does it mean to have the President of the United States coming to this town, to this, to this town of Beauregard? Um, it means a lot just to see his support for this area. It's not something we would see um, very often, so I, I find it very um, encouraging to see that he's um, sees the gravity of the situation. And it sounds like something you want your children to see as a mother, right? Yes. I don't know if they'll ever have the opportunity to see a president in person again. And I just think it would be an educational experience for them and something they will remember for a long time. How's this town feeling? Um, I think they're hurting, but they've come together and seem to be um, really just pulling together and helping one another. I see a spirit of community and care. 
You mentioned the taste, one of those families that we had seen on, on Lee Road 39, where we've seen so many people that had lost their lives. Have you gotten a chance to any talk to any of them? I know some of them are over here now meeting or waiting to meet with the president. Yes, I spoke with some of them yesterday. Um, my husband and three boys and I went out and helped them clean up some where I believe there were three homes that were destroyed that belonged to their family. And they had some family members down from Birmingham who were... Uh, had not seen the area since the storm and they seem to be I feel like they're running off of adrenaline right now um, and I feel like it's the grieving will really hit in the weeks to come sure. but they seem to be holding together well Certainly. are you hoping to get a chance to see the president I imagine I know he's gonna pass through here on a lighter note I am yes I'm hoping we at least get a glimpse of the motorcade <laughs> sure. and, all right well thank you very much and and take care. Uh, just one of the people that have been dealing with this, she mentioned a family from Alabama that had been through here. We were with them yesterday, and you'll be able to hear their account of what they've been going through on the news at 5. Many of those families, as I mentioned, were on buses brought across the street. This is just to give you a sense of the security and what happens over here. Uh, they've been staging over here on what is the East Campus and then moving over there uh, to the West Campus. This is where we've seen literally this entire room over here has been the destination point for all of the donations that have been coming through this area. The main room in that building, you see how big that, that facility over there is. The main room literally filled with clothes, some stacked as high as people over there. Those are all the donations that's been the Red Cross shelter that has been used over there. Today it'll be the meeting home where those families will get to meet the President of the United States, who we expect to console them and offer them his thoughts and prayers as so many across this country have. Uh, this is the presidential motorcade. It is coming uh, right down that main road headed into Lee County. And you can see there are quite a few people traveling with the president. This is a very large motorcade. Um, as you can tell from when he got off of uh, Marine One, there were so, so many people that were there to greet him and to travel with him. Um, there you see an ambulance, ambulance always traveling with the president just in case anything were to happen. Welcome back to News Midday. We are continuing our live team coverage of President Trump's visit to Lee County. Marine One just landing in Auburn a few minutes ago. The president is now in the motorcade traveling into Lee County, and we have live crews stationed all along that route. So right now, let's go to ABC 3340's Stoney Sharp, who is at one of those locations. Stoney, tell us where you are and what you're seeing and who you're with right now. Sarah, we're located on County Road 51 here in Lee County. We're in the parking lot of R&D Grocery Store, a fun local hangout where people come to eat breakfast. They talk about the news of the day, and right now the news of the day is President Trump is in town right now. People are inside waiting for the motorcade to pass by. They're also outside waiting for the motorcade to pass by. No one knows if it will happen. They're taking their chances here. The reason they're here in this location is dozens of homes were destroyed down this road, County Road 51. Uh, hills and valleys scraped clean by the tornado. Also, AJ and Taylor lived down this road, the six and 10, ten year old who were killed. We talked to locals here uh, from Beauregard hanging out in the parking lot, especially Christopher Gorey. He's hoping the community welcomes the president with open arms. He's grateful the president is visiting Lee County. Christopher's dad's best friend died in the tornado. They just attended the funeral. Right now they have heavy hearts. This is what Christopher had to say. Well, I was hoping to get to see him, uh, to position myself in a place where I can see him, where he can see somebody with the American flag. and. Uh, my real purpose was to come down and present the flag to the people that are working. This is him right here. Let's show you in the red shirt. Roy has been here on the line, uh, hoping to position himself in a spot where the president can see him. He's holding the American flag here to encourage the president and to uh, encourage the people here in Lee County. But again, live here in Lee County, we're waiting for the president on County Road 51 and we'll keep you updated when he gets closer. Live in Lee County, Stony Sharp, ABC 3340 News. All right, Stony, thank you. Let us know when you see that motorcade pass by and we'll come right back to you. We've had soldiers from Fort Benning. We have Auburn University students. We have members of Samaritan's Purse coming in here to help. So many people just wanting to say, what can we do? What do you need? I, a few moments ago, told you the story of what happened on this property. I've got one better for you now. I've got a survivor with me. This is a young man I told you about who was in his mobile home 
That mobile home is now up in a tree, and Chris Sword has survived. You are a survivor, Chris, and you're here to show us what resilience looks like. You've got a, a messed up leg, you've got a cracked rib, and yet even that night when you pulled yourself from the rubble, you started helping your, your father and your stepmother be pulled from out. Tell me a little bit more about it. Um, from which part? Uh, the part where you hurt yourself, oh, had to go find your dad. Right, like I said, um, after I landed in the woods over there, um, I just looked up and, and came towards the clear land. When I made it to the clear land, I noticed, dang, that's our pool. And then um, I noticed their house wasn't there and mine's gone. So I looked over there to the debris and I noticed the couch and I figured they might have been sitting on the couch. So that's why I first started digging. But actually they made it to the bathroom and- um, Which is probably what saved them. Right, because they hit the ground and the, you know, the tub landed on them and then everything else came on top of the tub. And I think my father, like I said, he was injured because the back of the commode broke and cut his Achilles down on his ankle. Oh. But, um, and then my stepmom was bruised up, but it, like I said, digging them out, it took, I was probably digging for 20, 30 minutes, moving washer, dryer, water heater. And then, and it then got help to, arrived. Right, then it got to where the walls were, where the wires were still holding the walls together and the cabinets were on there. And I looked up at the road and seen help and got them to come down here and maybe took maybe another hour and everybody was fine. And I know you all are sore, you're battered, you're bruised, but the wonderful news that I heard from your friend Matthew down here is I still have my best friend. Right, right. And uh, we know that you say help has been incredible. People are giving as they always do to help all of you. Right. Well, we thank you again. We appreciate it. We're going to tell more of your story later today. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. Yes, so, ma'am. Sarah, that's the resilience that you just keep seeing here. These people do not give up. I can tell you the crowds are continuing to gather around here, waiting for the president. They're anxious, certainly, to see him. As you see, and to give you a sense, this is where the crowd has kind of started. But look at the line that's starting to form of people joining along with the media out here, uh, waiting to get a glimpse of the president in this town. Uh, there is a sense of excitement that the fact that the president would come here, even though it is under such uh, tragic circumstances involving the death of those 23 people. This is a church, as we've been mentioning before, has been the site of sadness already this week. This was the church, in fact, where those family members of the 23 were given the news that their family members had died. We spoke on that day with the preacher as well uh, as as the coroner here, Bill Harris, who had the job of going to each and every single family member and letting them know the news that they suspected. But those we've talked to said it was a sense of closure, a finality that certainly hurt. But today, uh, a consoling message. That is what we expect from the president of the United States, who will be here meeting with those family members uh, inside of uh, inside of an auditorium here on the what is called the West Campus here of the church. That has been also the site where so many of these donations that have been coming in have been have been gathered. That is the Red Cross shelter there. We want to go back now to ABC 3340's Pam Huff, who has moved up from the location she was at. She is out on what might be one of the uh, roads that the president travels. And Pam, you're speaking with some volunteers there. Listen, this is Pete from Kansas City. Pete is with Samaritan's Purse and just got here, what, a couple of days ago? A couple of days ago. All right, why are you here and what are you doing? Well, we're just helping out as best we can. Uh, my son manages the food service for Auburn University Stadium, and he texted me that one of his employees had lost seven of their family members. So I thought, well, I'm in a position where I can move around a little bit, so I thought, well, I'll just get and, my truck and come down here and see what I could do to help. And you know, I mean, it's that kind of, of wonderful help that these people need right now, but I bet you've made some friends out here today already. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Josh, first person I met here, happened to live right across the street. And so he's been showing me around a couple of days, and um, he actually came over and found, the, rescued the people here right after the storm. He was one of those. Uh -huh. uh, and of course, uh, the, the son who was in the mobile home that is now wrapped around the tree Chris. right behind you, he is, is here and he helped mm -hmm. to call for help for his, mo his father mm -hmm. and stepmother who yeah, lived I in met, the house. Yeah, I met Chris uh, this morning. This morning, he's a great guy. Yeah. Tell me where you start. I mean, have you done this sort 
of, of recovery, if you will, before? No, this is the first time I've done this. And okay. uh, we just start. You just, there's, you just start. You, can, you mostly can't just stand back and look. Mostly we're looking for personal effects and mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. We've been able to find some yearbooks and mementos and insurance policies, things like that. Those are all important yeah. when you've lost yeah. everything well, to yeah. find something. Mm -hmm. How long are you going to be here? Um, I don't have an, an end date, so I'm just here for the duration. Well, we say welcome to Alabama and well, thank, thank you, you for your help. Well, thank you very much. Pete appreciate from it. Kansas City, we appreciate it, Sarah. Thanks. Don't you love hearing these stories? These are people who just care enough to say, I'll come help. I tell you, right now, Sarah, I am standing in the middle of a house. Well, actually, all that's left is the foundation of that house. Look how cleared off it is, except for cinder block. Just to my right, the family pool. The family pool is intact. If it were clean, it looks like you could go right into it. But if my photographer, Bill Castle, can, can keep going, that is what everything else is. What you see is what was where I'm standing. There is everything over that mountainside. We have seen refrigerators, we have seen stoves and cabinets and everything else. And if you keep moving along as Bill takes us on this path, you're gonna see where the bobcat is working. And Bill, if you can go into that tree, you can actually see the frame of what once was a mobile home. That's all that's left. But these folks out here are working right now. They're gathering anything they can. Of course, before they can get to a lot of it, they've got to clear trees. And you know, Sarah, it's just, it amazes me what, what survives. This is still in this house. It was probably in a garden here at the home. And he kind of has that look on his face of amazement, doesn't he? This is all that is left. And that is how clear, that is how much can just be taken away literally in a heartbeat. You know, we have uh, Mike Rogers, our, our congressman from this area here today, and he was back here again on Monday. And his word, I can't think of a better one. He said to look at the damage here is breathtaking. And it is, it takes your breath away as you look around and realize this happened within seconds. Lives were lost, lives were saved, whole histories just washed away, and it happened like that. And yet these people, still out here today, still working over here, still hopeful that they're gonna find something that they wanna keep, that they're going to have a memento of what life was as they look forward to what life will be. I've never seen anything like it. I just want to thank you on behalf of the First Lady and myself. I want to thank you for the job you do. You're incredible people. We couldn't get here fast enough. I wanted to come today. It happened, but I spoke with the governor. And she said, just give us a little more time. We need a little more time. And already the job is really great, the job you've done. President Donald Trump in awe of the damage in Lee County after speaking with those who lost loved ones and property. The president said it's hard to believe actually that we saw things you wouldn't believe. After touring the damage, President Trump and the First Lady viewed the 23 crosses in Beauregard dedicated to those who lost their lives. Before leaving Alabama, the president and First Lady stopped by a donation center in Smith Station talking with volunteers there. He thanked everyone for supporting those in need and doing what they can to help the tornado victims recover. ABC 3340 has team coverage on the president's tour of the tornado destruction in Lee County. ABC 3340's Pam Huff is field anchoring our coverage from hard hit Beauregard tonight. Good evening, Pam. Good evening to you, Brenda. You can probably still hear the chainsaws going in the background. I can tell you, people have been working since the sun came up this morning, and they say that they will continue to do that until the job is done. We met a survivor here today on the property where we are right now, and by all standards, he should have been a victim. It is amazing that he survived. He spent the day out here today, though, watching friends, neighbors, and strangers help recover what they could. Chris Sward heard the warning. He told me that, but he heard it too late. He tried to get into the bathroom of his mobile home. He couldn't make it, so he grabbed onto a sofa and he said, Lord, 
don't let a tree hit me. Well, when all was said and done, he has a broken bone in his leg. He has cracked ribs. Even in all that pain, he jumped up that night and he began frantically to search for his dad and his stepmother. I kind of finally heard them knocking. And I guess um, where they made it to the bathtub, I guess they hit the ground first and then everything started landing on them. But I moved what I could. I sent a truck out there by the road, ran and got help, came back, helped them dig a little bit. And that's when I started feeling the pain. I just sat there and just watched. But then finally rescued them. Now, for those who lost loved ones, they say they can do one thing, and that is to take it a day at a time. For those who lost their homes, that is the same message for them. Our team coverage continues right now with my colleague Stephen Quinn. Stephen, you were able to talk with a woman from Alabaster, in fact, who lost both of her parents here in Beauregard. Tell me more about the story. Pam, Crystal Garrett had moved to the Birmingham area near UAB. She wanted to pursue a career in nursing, but this was her home. This is where she grew up, and this is where she had spent many of the summers of her childhood, and even now as a mother, she tells me that this was actually where her children had played. She had been at this house just hours before that tornado touched down on that fateful Sunday night. Now nothing to her seems the same, and that's because her parents, both of them, in their 60s, as well as her uncle, were in this piece. They were in this trailer. She shared that story with us. For Crystal Garrett, home was always a phone call away. I talk to her every day. Garrett was on the phone with her mother, Floral Stenson, to let her know she had made it home. Talking to her, and she said, what are you doing? You going to get something to eat? And I said, yeah. And she was like, well, it's storming here now, so I'm glad y'all beat the storm. It was the last conversation they would ever have. Garrett's mother, father, Henry, and uncle Jamal Stenson were all killed in the tornado. Her brother's two children miraculously survived. I was just here sleeping in my old room with my girls Saturday night. The roads were covered with trees. It was Garrett's cousin who climbed over power lines and trees to reach the family home. You know, in general, in Russian, and you're just thinking about your family. I really didn't think about power lines, but the ones I did see, I just jumped over. Freddie Tate found his relatives' bodies as well as their neighbors. These images are going to stick with me for the rest of my life. Um, just horrifying. I don't think it'll never get back to normal. This place once was called Tateville. I think it will never be Tateville again. I got to see Garrett, by the way, at the reception that was held with President Donald Trump. She did get a chance to meet them. Meanwhile, she has two daughters, by the way, that were having spent many of their time there. They were able to salvage their bicycles that they had used just Sunday, just hours before that tornado happened. And you heard that she had two nephews as well that were inside of that uh, trailer that is no longer here. Turns out th that after everything had happened, they managed to be able to get up and then get into their father's truck and blow the horn. That's how first responders were able to even find out that they were alive. Harrowing moments as that tornado touched down right here in Beauregard. Pam? An amazing stories, and we have heard, I know you and I today, so many of those stories. I can tell you though that faith is strong here and hope for the future remains strong in Beauregard. Now, before the president actually did the ground tour today, he did an aerial tour of Beauregard aboard Marine One. An Auburn University flight instructor shared the image that you are seeing now. You can clearly see the tornado's path of destruction from the air. It really seems to stretch all the way past the horizon. The EF-4 carved a 24-mile path through Lee County before then moving on into Georgia. That entire tornado may have been on the ground for 70 miles. Now, the Alabama Department of Insurance is confirming for ABC 3340 right now that that department already is handling some 800 home and auto claims here in Lee County alone. 70 of those claims, we are told, are for significant home damage. Agents, though, are here. They are on the ground. They are working diligently because they say that they need to get these claims processed as quickly as possible so that the rebuilding can begin. 
The funerals, we have to talk about the funerals. There have been some already. One happened on Thursday, two happened today. Of course, there are 23 victims and this community has to say goodbye to them. They were all killed here in the Beauregard community. Today, services were held for two of the four children who died. 10-year-old Taylor Thornton's funeral was held in Opelika this afternoon. And the youngest victim, six-year-old A.J. Hernandez's funeral was also held today. Now, the services for the other victims obviously will continue into next week. We also want to give you an update on those who are being treated in hospitals here in Lee County, at UAB, and at Children's of Alabama. All are expected to survive. That certainly within itself is news. That's wonderful news. Four children do remain at Children's of Alabama. One was discharged earlier this week. And of the seven adults who were airlifted to UAB, two have been discharged. Much remains to be done here, Brenda. It is not going to happen overnight. You and I have seen this time and time again, unfortunately, with these types of disasters. But we can tell you that here in this community in Lee County, they are Beauregard strong.